Did it say what the topic was? Are they? Okay, let's do polar alignment. This is my telescope, y'all. I got the, uh, the movie projector set up behind it because across the field from us, there's a grain silo that has a really bright light that shines right into the telescope and causes me to lose data. So let's get in here and do polar alignment. Hmm? Oh yeah, where do you see that? Oh, okay, I think it's in the top right. now I'm just doing polar alignment okay so we want this number to be under two and I'm just out so I need to make a couple of minor tweaks up some and to the right some so let me back this one off and I can move this one clockwise to go up just here what was it to the right some so back this one off, tighten that one just to here, and try again. There we go. So let me snug these other ones back. Uh oh. The light went off. Okay, so I'll snug these down. Does it take randomly? Oh, you can plug it in. And since I snug those down, I'll refresh it one more time to make sure it didn't drift out any. Alright, still good. Alright, let's see if Andromeda is above the trees yet. Preview.
M31 Andromeda. Go to. Uh, get me a cable. I guess I can plug it in. Is it just the normal cable? Uh, just carry it with you. It's one of the normal ones we have, but it, you'll you'll see the connection. All right, so we're should be in the neighborhood of Andromeda. Do a 10 second picture. Where is it again? What's that? Okay. It'll just be one of the normal ones that we use in there. So it's up and to the right instead of centered. So what we do here is plate solve. So it analyzes the stars and can tell whether or not the target's in the center. And if it's not, then it'll make the necessary adjustments. So we just tweaked it just a little bit. And now we'll go for, let's do 60 seconds. So here's a 60 second. That's nice and centered now. But still pretty noisy because it's uh, not a very long exposure. For Astro anyhow. But we'll get the guiding going. It's got to run through calibration. You can see the Andromeda Galaxy in the guide scope as well. So this is doing uh, guiding calibration and it selects multiple stars and hones in on one in particular and then right now it's stepping it to the west and basically calculating what each step is and it'll go west, north, south, east and west and once it gets through uh, calibrating I can go up to Right now I did a 60 second exposure. I typically do three minute exposures and with the guiding, uh, it allows you to still have pinpoint stars because if the stars start to drift in one of those three minute exposures, it'll make small nudges to the mount to keep all the stars focused or pinpoint where they were. 
So, while that calibration is going, I'll show you some of my stuff here. This smaller scope up here is the, the guide scope. That's the guide camera. Do you have a question? Oh, who has a question? First time shooting Andromeda? Oh, uh, no, I've, I've shot Andromeda all month long. So I have just under 24 hours of RGB color data. And I've got two nights uh, using a narrow band filter for hydrogen alpha. And I'm gonna do tonight and tomorrow night collecting hydrogen alpha to to eventually make a an HA RGB uh, composite image. So let's see here. Make sure this light be turned back on. Oh is it ready to go? I plugged it in. Oh, okay. Well, I think I'm good for now. Mm. Alright so anyhow here's the the guide camera ASI one twenty MCS ASI Air Pro is a little camera there, or camera, a little computer there. The main scope is the William Optics Xenostar 61 with the uh, field flattener and then the Canon RA uh, mirrorless astronomy camera. And the mount. Oh, nice. I haven't really got to do a lot on uh, Pelica, and I've shot it a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. I'd like to get some more time on it for sure. Uh, the mounts the EQ6R Pro, and then I just run everything through the iPad. Let's see, still. Still going through the cal. Oh, wait, I think it's done now. Alright, so this tells you your total error on both axes, the uh, right ascension and declination. So whenever the blue or the red line starts drifting too far from center, it'll make those small nudges. But we can back out of this now. And let's see here. Auto run. And 130 frame, uh, repeated 130 times, and the exposures are 180 seconds or three minutes long. I do calibration frames whenever I get up in the morning, so I'll set this uh, thing up to go and watch the first couple of uh, three minute exposures come through and make sure everything looks okay. And then I'll go to bed and get up and do the calibration frames. Uh, no, I haven't shot any HDR yet. It is on the list, though. I'm doing baby steps and trying to uh, do composites or any different types of integration. Alright, so that number's coming down steady. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. I think I might have just have to lower it here. Is it? Huh? Is that better? Oh, here, I'll go back and show you the settings it's talking about. So, over here, there's different settings you can go with. I leave the Meridian flip on. I I don't have it turn the the computer off because when I get up get up I want to be able to shoot my calibration frame so when it's still on but it does go to the home position which is basically just pointing at Polaris the North Star. So go ahead and start that. Yes, I know it's going to go home. So 10 second delay and then it'll start with the first three minute exposure.
Hey Ryan, one of my last uh, TikToks I posted was uh, a little video about setup, and um, I think I showed that the the image at the end of that one when it was 17 hours on Andromeda of RGB color data. So check that out if you want to see what I've stacked so far. I've got 23 hours and 45 minutes in RGB, and I think I stacked 70 percent, or around 70 percent. So that's about 17 hours, I think. I just started uh, shooting astrophotography in January, so it's been a, a crash course, a crash course for sure. Oh. oh, yeah, I bet. There's a little kitten. It's one of our shed cats. There's two little cats that sleep in or under our shed. Which one? Oh yeah, the big one. Let me see here. Oh, he ran off. Where'd he go? Oh, they're both over there. Yeah, trying to get it to focus. It's too dark. Okay, that first three minute exposure coming through. Alright, so I don't know how good you can see it on y'all's end, but I know that there's two dark bands here, so I can kind of see those two dark bands on the, those, those are on the leading edge of the galaxy. And then the smaller one over here, and I think that other one's in this neighborhood, but it must be too faint. Hmm? Oh, yeah. All right, so that's rolling. One of 130 complete. Guiding's getting way down in the weeds, so that's good. Mm -hmm. oh, there they are right there. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if they're gonna, if we're gonna come over here. I I haven't done any tweaks on the uh, the EQ6R. It's all fully stock, no belt mods or anything like that. It's been running pretty good though. The next, uh, next two things I want to get are the uh, electronic filter wheel and um, a dedicated astronomy camera, like the 2600 or something. So 
Somebody invited me to go live together? No, this is like one of those grow things. Oh. Like to grow your account or something. Yeah, I forget how much those 2600s even are, but that's the, that would be my ideal setup for this. And then I would use the RA for more wide field stuff with camera lenses on, I have, what I started with is, was the, uh, what is it? iOptron Sky Guider Pro. I'll have to check it out. I'm sure I'll be able to find a video on that. What's up? Which way they go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so once I get a dedicated astronomy camera and uh, so that I can, you know, obviously just so I can cool it to get those ultra long exposures. That's the long term goal. So get try to get five plus minute exposures out of it. But the R is is really good for now. Thinking about the next telescope though, because once I get a a dedicated camera for this setup here. It'd be about time to get bigger mm -hmm. or longer focal length. We'll see though. Oh yeah. That's cool. I have a Canon 60 that I shoot with also. I was thinking about modifying it, but I haven't got around to it yet. I think that'll about do it. They have a DIY mod for the Canon 60. Yeah, so I've got, I actually have two 6Ds. One of them is broke. It's got a, I got a new LCD screen and glass for it. And while I have that apart, I'm thinking about modifying it, or at least taking a look at all the internals to see what I got to do to modify it. And maybe fix that broken one and modify it at the same time but that may be biting off more than I can chew I don't know did you modify yours okay cool I watched some of a video one time but uh, it was a long time ago about two hours that's not too bad yeah I do like I replace all of our like kids tablet screens and laptop batteries and cell phone batteries and stuff like that so I think I could handle it but I know a lot of that stuff in those cameras is pretty tiny yeah I'll give it a shot you know? alright so this will be the third third picture coming in what scope are you looking at well my dream scope is the uh, William optics like something like the FLT 132 or something comparable they're pretty uh, pretty pricey but not as bad as uh, as a bunch of scopes that size Yeah, I'm really wanting to get a, a 
a backyard, one of those dome observatory things, the plastic domes. Because I'm pretty handy with that kind of stuff. So maybe next year for something like that, just so I wouldn't have to take this thing apart every time. But the list is very long. <laughs> and there's no telling when I'll it, it, you know, just get it in pieces. Thinking, yeah, roll off roof. There's an observatory north of us, and it, they've got a set uh, several really nice roll off roofs and a, a big dome. Oh, nice. You're gonna have to fall when you push a lot of stuff. What's that? Oh, we're friends. Alright, well, I think I'm going to let this thing do its, do its thing all night. I'm good to go with that, so I'll just leave it all out here and turn off this other stuff. Alright, you ready to go? Yeah. But we'll check on it in the morning. Thanks for stopping in, y'all. Thank you. <laughs>